Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Suggs Weekly Video. My name is Sean Bordner and I have with me today Matthew McDormand. Thank you very much oh, for joining us today. Pleasure. We are at the SharePoint Conference 2009 in Vegas. So I guess my first question would be, how are you enjoying the conference? It's been it's been amazing. I am completely whipped. I actually ran into Liam the other day. I was looking right past him with that thousand yard stare. <laughs> and, uh, and he goes, Matthew, and I, I went, and just kind of focused in and right. saw him. It was amazing. Right. Yeah, it's uh, one of the nice things you run into so many people. You do, and uh, it's it is so much worth it. every bit of travel budget yeah. and conference budget. It's uh, totally it's great. astounding. Yep. Well, thank you for joining us today, oh, Matthew. Fun. Just a, a few quick questions. Um, the first one would be: Out of everything in SharePoint 2010, from the perspective of your IT professional, if you have to narrow it down to one thing, what's the one thing that they're really going to love about SharePoint 2010? Well, they're going to love everything, but if I had to say one thing, I'd probably say that it's the, uh, it's the health monitoring. It's the ability to, within central administration, have out-of-the-box rules that check for compliance to uh, farm configuration right. that the product group feels is necessary, but also being able to um, roll your own rules that might be particular to your configuration as you learn more about the platform to make sure that those items that need to stay in compliance are in compliance. Um, you can run the rules on demand, you can run the rules on timer jobs, and then once you've fixed the configuration issue that may have raised an issue with the rules, you can then rerun the rule to make sure that you actually configured the system. Double check it. Double check it. Make sure that you actually did fix it rather than wait for your timer job to run again. Very cool. Yeah, that's a big, big win. Okay, same question, but apply this to a different role. Apply this to the role of the developer. What's the one thing a developer is really going to love about SharePoint 2010? Um, I'm going to have to roll a lot of stuff into the, the new developer experience and if I had to choose the one thing in the new developer experience, I would say the client object model. Mm -hmm. So the ability of um, um, referencing two assemblies in your project from your desktop to be able to, rather than have, to, to be doing development on the server like you do in 2007, right. just having the entire development experience on your Windows 7 desktop being able to reference a pair of assemblies that have complete access to SharePoint Foundation, um, the entire site collection, lists and libraries, all the goodness of the link, um, and, and having it optimized for the client experience. Um, it makes Silverlight development better, it makes jQuery development better, it makes uh, desktop development better yeah. against SharePoint. Yeah, that's huge, yeah. that's huge. Okay, and finally, the, the, the one thing applied to the last role, which is just the end user, who might not even need to even know it's on SharePoint, but sure. me as an end user, what? how am I going to benefit from a 2010 platform? For me, that's, that's the broadest piece, right? Um, I would say it is probably... Um, okay, I'll go with improvements in the UI, such that the... Sure. the, uh, the branding, the, the master pages out of the box, the out of the box accessibility experience with XHTML, right. something the end user would never see unless they were a little geeky, right. but the improved experience from compatibility to standards and Microsoft's approach to adherence to those standards is, is I think one of the most foundational changes for the, for the user sure. that impacts IT Pro and impacts developers because it makes it easier for them to develop those, those sites for the end users that they're demanding. That makes sense because uh, me as an end user, I might be familiar with this interface that now SharePoint also has with the ribbon. And, right. Yeah. And it affects the user in, in so many other ways because now you have um, much better compatibility with other browsers so the users can choose the kind of yeah. browsers they want. That's right. So that's why when I say it, 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 I feel it really is a foundational change to make it a really better, better experience for the end user. I mean, there's the ribbon, there's there's so many other things, right. but it depends on what kind of user you are right. and how you're going to take advantage of those. Yep. Okay, lastly, Matthew, um, a lot of members of the SharePoint user group, mm -hmm. the suck.org, are asking, you know, there's some chatter about, you know, I'm already on SharePoint 2007, our organization has adopted it with both arms, and we're loving life, <laughs> we've come a long way, and it's keeping on helping us with the business processes and so on, but right. what's in it for us to upgrade to 2010? So um, there are, were a number of advancements from 2003 to 2007 that impacted SharePoint and impacted users in a really positive way. I think of content types as being one of the major advancements from 2003 to 2007. The, um, 
what happens in 2010 now is you have enterprise content types. So you have the ability to have enterprise standards across all of your site collections that share that content type. So if I think of a sales organization um, in a large company, that may have multiple divisions, you define what that sales organization has for a statement of work or a contract, right. and that content type applies to every single con every single site collection in the organization. I think the other huge change is um, enterprise taxonomy. Um, being able to have end users enter and tag content so that you have end user generated social content, I'm a social maven, um, but also have the enterprise be able to have formal, um, formal tags and rating systems in place so that as I'm uploading and entering new content or as I'm authoring a page, I can tag and rate it from a standard store of tags. Your spelling is correct, your taxonomy is correct, and um, the end user experience becomes that much better because of the standards across the farm. Uh, Microsoft has done an amazing job of reaching out across the farm and making sure that it doesn't matter what site collection you're in, you're able to take advantage of the standards of the organization. Very cool. And Matthew, um, in your case, you know, you did a great session on social. Thank you. And, and there's a, a lot of members that haven't seen 2010 yet, haven't played around with it, obviously. Sure. So, so what's the deal with social? Is there any oh, of that man. built into 2010? There is so much <laughs> built into 2010. I am so excited about this. In 2007, we really wanted SharePoint to be a social platform. And we spent a lot of time trying to convince people that it was a social platform. But just saying, saying that it's so didn't make it so. Right. And so we really had an uphill battle. And it, and it came down to really two or three specific components of SharePoint that were missing. I think of tags and notes, I think of rating, and um, I think of that ability to, um, to form groups of people in an ad hoc way. I mean, we have colleagues, but it really was, was a struggle. SharePoint 2010 not only brings tags and rating right to the front, it's enterprise-wide, but um, the ability to do social search so as I am tagging and rating content, I'm indicating what my interests are. I indicate that I'm an expert in something or that I'm just interested in it. As soon as I indicate that I'm an expert, I see on my news feed other people may have tagged items that I'm an expert in. And I'll begin to see those people fed into my news feed. And that brings me to what I think is the most significant improvement in SharePoint from a social perspective, and it's the concept of an activity feed. Sure. The activity feed is just amazing, and Microsoft is building in the plumbing for us to build custom activity feeds. So a couple of the samples I've been thinking of for how we can take advantage of this. The first one is, I like to use the carrot instead of the stick. Okay. So, incenting employees to do the right thing. Right. Let's say that you have a CRM system. You could write a custom activity that when the sale went from 80% to 100% and they got a signature, you could send out an activity to everybody in the sales department with your face, right. just made a sale to, with a link to the customer site, for this much money, and that way, if I'm a salesperson and I'm dragging a little bit, and I'm seeing all my colleagues' faces mm -hmm. smiling back at me, they've made right. sales right. and I haven't. That's the carrot. Yeah. I want to get out there and start working yeah. on it. And when you make the sale, you know your smiling face is showing right up there. on my page, right. yeah. taunting me. And I think that's huge. You can take it to the developer example is what I used in my session, which is if I have a, a, a defect and it's filed against something that I wrote, then I could have the um, I could have the defect tracking system file an activity event against me. But if you're on my team and you're tracking defects against the system, you'll see my face there has a def is has been issued a defect for this part. Right. But since you're part of my team, you're getting that same activity. You click on the link. Hey Matt, you can enter a note against it. Hey Matt, let me give you a hand on sure. that. I think it might be in this module. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, we're bringing social out of this formal content document, um, sales, CRM, bug tracking system, and putting it right in front of the user on their home page in, in their face. And I've awesome. had so many conversations about people wanting to immediately see the value and they want to extend the activity feeds tomorrow. Yeah, that's really, really powerful. Yeah, it's stuff. pretty cool stuff. Well, well, that's all the time we have for this week, guys. Thank you so much, Matthew, Thank you. for your time. Great time. Thanks.